Good morning, guys. It is Sunday today, and I have pulled the wires out of that conduit that was laying over here temporarily, running power from this back row of panels up to the front row and then into our little the system we've been running on for the last 10 months. <laughs> yeah, with its uh, great wires laying everywhere and la dee da. So it served us well, though. I mean, it kept us powered all night and everything. Um, so, uh, I've pulled those wires back. I was actually going to make up some new wires and, and permanently wire this back row, but I decided that it's starting to get light out. Might as well get power to it right now. So I just took the wires that were running into there and kind of draped them across here and hooked them in to that breaker. <clears throat> Later today I'll actually wire that up proper, but whatever. And I think I just heard the fans kick in, which means, look at that. So we're getting 130 volts off those panels and 91 watts. So we're just barely we're pushing, flipping between one amp and zero amps going in. Um, so these inverters are kind of cool because the charge controllers in them will run even if you have the inverter off. So, so it's, as you can see, just have a wire draped across here because I don't have the other inverter in here yet. It's still charging up the the golf cart batteries so that we decommission them fully charged rather than whatever. Um, so, yeah, we're going to let this go for a few hours and then, then we'll get to work on finalizing stuff in here. Alright, so our batteries are full. I just unhooked this front row of solar panels so they're not feeding the wires that are in this conduit anymore coming into the into the trailer here. Um, I shut off the inverter, so now I'm going to disconnect the batteries and unhook this transformer. I'm going to bring this inverter into the power shed, cut some holes in the side for the conduit, and get it mounted. And then <clears throat> I'm going to bring this uh, transformer in there and get it hooked up temporarily so we can use it to power our stuff off of the inverters that are in the power shed. Alright, so what we've got here is some uh, little slug busters. They uh, let you knock out round holes from metal boxes for electrical wiring and whatnot. And I'm going to well if you can see there is the remnants from a previous one. So I'm going to start by drilling a hole. Unfortunately I don't have a drill big enough to do that bolt in one step. So what I'm doing is drilling a hole through first and punching a half inch hole and then using this to punch the three quarter hole. So first step is deciding where exactly we're going to put this at. What I've been doing is counting in three. It's funny, I did this a few times on the other one and I am now sitting here questioning which which spot exactly? I'm pretty sure that's it. And if I'm off by one, it won't make much difference. It'll be, a, you know, less than a quarter of an inch. So. So there's our hole for this guy to go through.
did you fall to? Alright, I'm making the last two gauge cable here, the negative going into this third inverter. And so we're going to be coming out of this junction block here. And so I'm just going to measure it off to make sure I have about the right amount of cable. So I shove that all the way into the end of the block. And I'm going to bring it over here up into here and it should be about right there and of course I didn't bring my tools over here that was brilliant Ooh, I happen to have my cutters so I'll go ahead and cut this guy off Okay, so we've got our, <laughs> of course it falls down through the middle of the thing. Oh, come on now. Whoot. All right. Okay, so I've got my lug here. This will be going up inside the inverter. And then I've got this thing called a ferrule. All it is is just a tube of metal that goes over the wires to hold all those fine little threads together. So, <clears throat> what I do, put the thing on here, kind of mark off where you want the insulation to be cut back to. They sell really nice tools and whatever for doing this, but I don't know. I think this actually works better than those tools usually, as long as you can avoid cutting your fingers off. Um, so I do one ring around and then just do a strip like that and then grab a hold of it, pull it off, you have a nice clean cut. And then slip your fitting on there. And I've got this uh, little Harbor Freight Special which works quite well. Normally I shrink wrap this, but I don't have any power right now because the transformer was friggin' hot and it's heavy as hell. Um, so, but this is the ground anyway, or negative or whatever, so it'll be... <sighs> and when it goes up inside the inverter it's actually really protected it's got plastic and whatnot around it and then so it'll be good and if I really feel bad about it I can someday take it off and shrink wrap it but for now this will work just fine I guess I could use a lighter or something to shrink. Oops, I have to catch the thing. You guys are distracting me. Um, I could I could throw some shrink wrap on it and use a lighter, but whatever. That would require going and finding a lighter. <laughs> um, so, and these ferrules, well, pretty much all crimpy things have. Uh, little mushroom bend. That's the end you want to put on first because it makes it much easier to get these fine little bits of wire in there. And it doesn't matter if a little bit sticks out the end of this because it's really just there to hold the wires together and make it so you have one thing to make contact with. And these I usually go ahead and give them two little crimps just so that it goes all the way up to the end. So there you go. We've got our one end here and it's nice and tight and I've taken these and cut them and it's like just a solid piece of copper on the inside just from that. 
I mean, this thing looks little, but I mean, it'll put like 10 tons, it claims. So, you know, 20,000 pounds of force on something this size? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, time to hook up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hook this up. Just stick the wire up and through here. We've got to kind of turn it a little bit on its side so we can get that in there. And there you go. And then I've got a nut right here. I'm trying to work around the camera. <laughs> Which means I'm probably really loud yelling right into this thing. So we just snug those up. You want them fairly tight. Um, and then I'm going to clean up all those other wires later. But for now, we're just uh, getting this guy in here. So actually, let's pull you over here so you can see this better. So see the, the ferrule? holds all those wires nice together so we can just stick it right through here and go right in there and it's gonna make good positive contact and then we just crank this guy down you know I really really like these things it's freaking awesome for most of my life I always had to pull out a saw and whatever to cut these either you know either a hand saw or like a miter saw or something to cut them and now it's like, all right, and <laughs> done. I know that's not new, but it's new for me because I always, you know, do things the hard way. All right, so I've got that uh, conduit strung across, kind of temporary. It's got a little wire tie holding on to it, and I've got the wires just kind of draped around um, until next week when we get that uh, box to put those breakers in. Um, but... Aside from that, all the high amperage stuff is, you know, done proper. I still need to tie it up and make it uh, neat and, you know, make sure there's no strain on any of those wires. But <laughs> the weight of the wire is not going to hurt. Not going to hurt them. Um, then we've got this communication wire that I need to clean up tomorrow. And how you can see here, that blinking light in the middle, this one here that says charge means we're still putting charge in and it's like seven o'clock right now so we're making more power than we're using so that's cool and our battery's almost fully charged um, it, it was fully charged but I ran multiple air conditioners just to kind of put a big load on it and it actually started drawing from the battery a little bit um, like three amps or so well six amps three amps on each inverter um, so We've got here our lines coming in from the inverters, and you can see I've got just the two of them turned on because I'm only running the two inverters because we only have our two strings of uh, solar panels hooked up, and we don't need the extra inverter power to do anything. Plus, if we did, we'd uh, burn off this transformer because <laughs> it's only capable of handling uh, 10,000 watts, and between the three of those, that'd be 15,000. And we'd melt those wires long before that happened. So, because um, right now I just have two 12 gauge wires coming down to the transformer. And that's enough to give us basically 40 amps at 120 uh, because we're feeding it with 240 out of here. So it's 20 amps at 240 going into the transformer and then um, still 40 amps at 240, but it's split phase. So you basically have your white wire right here that's your neutral and then the two orange wires are the two legs coming off the transformer um, so we can pull up to 40 amps on either one of those legs and still only be drawing 20 amps of uh, 240 so that's that's where things are so at this point we're all up and running off that forklift battery it'll be interesting to see um, after we mess around doing some cooking and stuff like that tonight how much uh, how much power that's using and how well the thing holds up overnight I'm gonna be scurrying out here first thing in the morning and checking it out we don't have any of our communication stuff hooked up yet so we can't check it from inside sadly 
Ooh, look at that. I just got done recording and our charge lights are solid on both inverters, which means not only are we making more power than we're using, the battery is topped off and it's sitting in float now. All right, guys. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and do all that stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye.